Welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Thank you for making the time. Today we'll talk about change management. Change management is one of the most important activities in requirements management. And it means we have to deal with the fact that requirements change and evolve over time. One time a student asked me, hey, but like, what if we develop the perfect software system? Wouldn't we ev not ever have to update it? And I crowdsourced the answer. Crowdsourcing the answer is a fancy term for I asked the rest of the audience. And I asked them, well, what, what if we had a perfect software system? What do you think? Would we ever have to change anything? And I thought for a while. And finally, they came up with the answer, well, probably yes, because the world around isn't perfect. So in an ideal world, <laughs> with an ideal software system, we may not ever have to change the software, but in the real world, we do. We're not going to get around. So even if I have a software system that does exactly what I want it to do, the application environment where it's going to be applied, where it's being operationed, where it's being operationed, I don't think that's a word, where it is being used in operation, that is going to change over time. Some of the constraints are going to change, some of the interfaces are going to change, and so we will have to evolve our system eventually. And that starts with the requirements. And so for change management, when I have a new requirement coming in, that gets assigned a status. And that status can either be proposed or it can be assumed. Now what's that? So proposed would be if our customer actually said it, and assumed would be if we think that's probably a good idea, even though the customer did not explicitly ask for it. Either way, what we're going to have to do with that new requirement is we're going to have to validate it. And then if it's not in, it gets denied. If it's technically not feasible, if we cannot afford it, if another stakeholder has a conflict with it, for all those reasons or one of those, it may get denied. Otherwise, it will get accepted. And from accepted, there are two routes that we can go, depending on the type of requirement that we're talking about. Now, if you think back to the types of requirements that we had, we have one route that says designed, implemented, and tested. And we have another route that just says applied. So what do you think? Which types of requirements go this route and which requirements go that route? Take a moment to reflect. We had the functional requirements, quality requirements, process requirements, system constraints. For functional requirements, I'm going to go down here. Functional requirements definitely need to be implemented. What about quality requirements? The system has to be fast. The system has to be easy to use. Yeah, those also need to be designed for, they need to be implemented, and they need to be tested. And what about system constraints? If it says the system that we're talking to is using version 3.2.2 of a specific language that we 
talk in with that system. Then we need to design for that, we need to implement according to that, and we need to test it. So that's going to be the lower route too. System constraints go down here. Last but not least, in this project, we're following the rational unified process. Can we design and implement that and test it? I'm pretty sure we cannot implement it, but we can apply it. So process requirements, they go this route. And they're the only type that goes with this route. And then both end up as released at the very end. So this is the entire process, the entire pathway of stages and states that a requirement will go through in the course of its lifetime, maybe several times. So every version of a new requirement will go through this. I have a new requirement that goes down this route and then it's released in version 1.0. If something in that requirement changes, we're going to do that whole thing again until it gets released in version 1.1 and so on and so forth as often as it changes. Now, if we were to do this all the way from the first day, we would never get anywhere because in the very early stage, like the first few days or first few weeks, depending on the size of your project, a lot is going to change in the requirements. So what is usually done is you're going to allow for a certain time period where this is not done to the full extent yet. Like they still have to be validated and then you move on. But only after a certain time period, you set what's called a baseline. And then from that baseline timestamp onwards, you go through the whole change process. That's it on change management. Thank you.